Hi everyone, Matt Morris here. Welcome to my new live series I'm doing. Uh, this is born out of necessity for a lot of my students um, over the past couple years of teaching, especially in COVID. I've had a lot of uh, students approach me wanting to learn more about country guitar, um, early kind of swing and early bebop guitar. And through playing uh, uh, with them and um, trying to discover things together, I've come across a lot of holes in people's playing. So this is something um, of a course is kind of my response to that. And hopefully um, this really benefits you all. So kind of the, the idea behind this course is like music theory, all guitar related for the working musician or the hobbyist that just wants to basically get busy playing music faster. <laughs> um, but knowing knowing enough to be sufficient. So this is stuff, of, if you've read descriptions for this, um, I have I use this in every day I play and when I when I play in professional settings, um, I use all of this stuff and it's it's a huge it's a it's a must know in my opinion. So with this first lesson, we're going to be talking about it might sound simple, but knowing the notes. I've run across many students who just can't tell me that, you know, 13th fret on the first string is an F note. 6th fret on the G string, what is that? I can't even say it. A D flat or C sharp. <laughs> you know, be able to recall things like that. Um, and I know everyone learns a different way. Some are visual learners, some are auditory, and that all plays a part. But what I want to start with is just ground zero, learn the notes of the guitar and ways that we can do that and kind of start seeing how the guitar is tuned and use that to our advantage. So if you're following along um, lot with this live or you've seen, this is uh, archived and you're seeing this for the first time, go look at um, the link in the description. It's going to have a link to uh, the course that's on my site. It's a free course, um, but there's a bunch of PDFs there of all this stuff that I'm going to cover. And that's what I'm going off of. So ground zero, let's start playing some. So we've got this, we have to have the base, we have to have a couple of basic understandings and that's that there are a certain amount of notes in music. Um, I'm not even gonna get into that right now, but as a guitarist, most of us are taught that, you know, this open sixth string or open fifth string or whatever open string is the same as the 12th fret. And there's a fancy word for that called an octave, right? But with just knowing that, we can just begin to kind of learn everything that way and use that as our foundation. So by doing that, we can know um, the amount of notes on the guitar, right? So if we start with our low, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then we're at the octave and a repeat. So we've got twelve unique notes and then a repeat. So that's right off the bat. What I'm gonna do is just say the names of the notes, or just say the name of the first note. We have an E note, that's our low E. Most everyone who plays guitar just knows that because they've had a friend or a guitar teacher show them that. We have a low E. Now, when it comes to notes, we have a certain like limiting of the lettering, right? We have A through G, and then it starts over. So knowing that, we've got a, B, C, D, E, F, G. So seven unique notes, and then the other fives, as I'm sure you've heard before, are sharps or flats. And we can kind of get into that in a little bit. But that's what it makes up. So we gotta start somewhere, right? So our low E. If we know that's our low E, we can think the next note, the first fret, that's gonna be an F note. And there's ways on which sharps and flats work, but for now, just trust me and, and we'll build from that and we'll get into sharps and flats and key signatures and all of that later. So we've got E, F, second fret's F sharp, just one above F, third fret's G, fourth fret's G sharp, fifth fret's A, sixth fret's A sharp, seventh fret's B, eighth fret's C, ninth fret C sharp, 10th frets D, 11th frets D sharp, and you're back to E. If you don't know that, pause it and, know, and learn that. Learn the names of all those notes because that's gonna be our foundation for everything. So a quick thing I have a lot of students ask is a side note, and there's gonna be some side notes throughout this. It's not on the PDF, but just wanna say, 
some people will go, well, wait a second, why don't you call this F sharp a G flat? Well, good question. In the case of this context, because we're starting on an E, we have to fill out like all the alphabetical notes, right? So we can't say like E, F, then F sharp. It just doesn't work. We've got to say, or excuse me, I said that backwards. We can't, we can't say E, F, F sharp, G, when we're talking about like just a major pool of notes, which we'll get into in a second. So we've got E, F, F sharp, G. That is a G flat, that's technically right. And it's right for now, but in a, in a few minutes, it's gonna be wrong. <laughs> so those are all of our notes up to, up to the 12th fret, right? So we're just gonna, we're gonna start there. Those are our, our notes all the way to the 12th fret. Now we're gonna add in what you would call like the major scale. I don't like scales, I don't think in scales. So I think of like the major pool of notes. Um, there is a lot of background to it, but are, just know, because you've listened to music before, that your ear is tuned to the sound of going, of the sound of like. Whether you did that in school, in choir, or in church or something, that, that is like, we're all tuned to that sound, and that's the major scale or the major pool of notes. You can start anywhere in there. Skip around. That's the sound of it. So we're gonna learn how to create that real quick. So, and we start on our low E, because we've already memorized all those notes on the, tw on the, the sixth string all the way up to the 12th fret. E. E to F, or E to the first fret, is a half step. That just means we're going one up one fret. E to F sharp is a whole step. That means we're going up two frets. So open to one, open to two, right? Whole step, half step. That's gonna be our next kind of thing. So if you're looking at the PDF, when I say major scale or ordering, again, this is just with it starting on E, so it is a quote unquote scale. We've got E, and then we're gonna go up, if you're looking at that, at that little label, up a whole step, excuse me, up a whole step to F sharp, up a whole step to G sharp, up a half step to A, up a whole step to B, up a whole step to C sharp, up a whole step to D sharp, up a whole step, to E, and then back down. That's the major scale, starting with your root note or the first note in it. So if I say E major, that's what you would play. So to, go, to quickly go back real quick to what I was talking about with sharps and flats, the reason we would say this is F sharp and not G flat because if we're count, or like saying our alphabet, we don't go E then G, we gotta say F, right? E, F, G, it, it, or, um, it comes after it, right? So E, F sharp, G sharp, not E, G flat, A flat. That's just not how it works. If you get that across where it has to be like the next logical letter, that's gonna help when it comes to key signatures way down the line, all right? So real quick, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Boom, you got it. The key of E is easy now. Now, let's start on the F. We're gonna do the same thing. This is our, our first fret, and we're gonna play that pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That's in that little bracket at one where it says major scale ordering on the PDF. So F to G is a whole step. G to A is a whole step. A to B flat is a half step. B flat to C is a whole step. C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. E to F is a half step. Right? So if we play this comparing to E, we're going to have all the same sounds, right? So E is. And then F. It's up a little bit, but it's all the same space between the notes, and that's what's really important. So now you've got E and F under your fingers. Let me scroll down on my notes here. All right, so we have E and F. Now let's just go to the next one, F sharp. No one likes playing an F sharp, but why not? So F sharp, 
up a whole step to G sharp. G sharp up to A sharp. A sharp up to B. B half step, or excuse me, whole step up to C sharp. C sharp up to D sharp. D sharp up to E sharp. And then F sharp. And the reason we call it E sharp and not F is again, we're keeping the letters consistent, right? So we don't just say um, uh, uh, E, or excuse me, F, F sharp, because we use two Fs there. It would be E sharp F. That's the way it is. It's kind of weird, weird saying that, thinking like, but that's what it is. You just keep the letters consistent. So one more time on that one. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And the more and more you do this and like say that pattern to yourself and say the names of the notes to yourself, it just becomes more and more easy. And then the, the most important thing I think here, what I see with my students is they don't know the names of the notes. So you got to learn the names of the notes first and be, and if I say, you know, what's the third of, you know, the third note after F sharp, you could go, oh, well, that's A sharp. And the F sharp, you know, pool, major scale pool of notes or whatever, you, however you want to call it. That's the really important thing. And then you just start getting familiar with, oh, this is this distance between all of them and like it feels a little more e easy and you're more flowing between the notes, right? That's the idea. So that's F sharp. Let's go to G because most of us play in G way more than we do in F sharp. So we're at G. G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. B to C is a half step. C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. E to F sharp is a whole step. F sharp to G is a half step. So you've got all of that under your fingers now. So what I would recommend doing is going all the way up to the 12th fret of the guitar, and you can pass the 12th fret if you feel comfortable, and because it just repeats everything, or you can come back an octave lower and finish it off. So for instance, if we were playing an A, A, B, C sharp, D, E, instead of going up, I'm gonna keep thinking the pattern, E, I gotta have to whole step next, F sharp, G sharp, A. Totally fine, that's a great way of practicing it. But do that with all 12 keys and say the names of the notes because that's what we want to memorize. We want to memorize what notes are with what pool of notes because everything's based off of the major scale or major pool of notes as I like to call it. So that's your first thing. If you, if, if you don't have that down, pause it and get all of that. All right. And if you have any questions, those of you who are watching live, please you know drop it in and I'll, I will be more than happy to answer them. So we're scrolling down on our PDF, and now we're going to talk about, we've just, you know, mastered playing on the sixth string and mastered all the notes. Well, now we got to break out and play more notes across, right? So this is how we can get to the other, um, the other notes on the other strings without just, like, kind of guessing. <laughs> um, which is fine, because I guessed at first. But then I was like, oh, wait, there's a pattern, or, or you know, there's, there's some stuff here that I can, it can help me remember better. Not to say that guessing is bad or anything. So this next idea is we're gonna look at what it, like the distance between the strings. So if we're playing, I think it's best said just by giving you an example. So if you're looking at crossing strings, if I wanna play the G major scale starting on G and get to the fifth string. So I'm gonna play G then A. Now I know in my thing it's whole, whole. So I gotta go up a whole step. Normally it would be G, A, B. But I wanna go to the fifth string. So I can look um, an experiment first. So I could go, okay, G, A, that's wrong. G, A, oh yeah, that sounds right to my ear, right? So there I know is my B note. So what I can do now, and this is what I, you know, Years ago, I was like, oh, cool, this makes sense. So, if this is my note I'm leaving, A to B, I know from the fifth to the, uh, excuse me, the sixth to the fifth string, I have to go down four frets. One, two, three, four. And then go over this string. And that is what a whole step looks like, if you, if you can follow that, across the string. So, G to A is a whole step. A across the string like this, so that's going down four frets is a whole step. B to C, 
That's your half step there. C to D, that's your whole step. So we're going whole, whole, half, whole. I'm just following the pattern. So now I'm going, oh, okay, well there's my B note on the fifth string. Here's my C note on the fifth string. Here's my D note on the fifth string. And that only comes, I mean, yes, we play songs and we have all this random, you know, things we learn and stuff. But that only comes from having that basis as the sixth string of going, oh, I know all the notes on the sixth string, therefore I can jump to those other spots. So uh, we've got B, C, D. Now, okay, now we gotta do another whole step in our, in our cycle or in our pattern. So my whole step here would be there. So D to E. Now, if I go, well, that's, that's open and that's the same notes, that's wrong. Well, that's wrong. Oh, so it's right there. The pattern's the same. So you just go down four frets again. And then over the string, so four frets. So D to E. So now we know between fifth and fourth, if we want a whole step going up, right, it's just four fret difference. So now you've got G to A is a whole, A to B is a whole, B to C is a half, C to D is a whole, D to E is a whole, E to F sharp, F sharp, to G and you're back. And so now you now have G like this and G like this. And again, you can start on any notes, it doesn't really matter, as long as you're playing within those pool of notes and those are all like the G major sound or the notes that constitute G major. So real quick, sixth string to fifth string, if you're trying to find a whole step between the two, it's down four frets. Fifth string to fourth string is the exact same. Down four frets for a whole step. Okay? Let's do uh, some more here. We're gonna start um, on the G here on the fourth string and keep going. So we now know we worked all our way up. This is on the PDF. This is the second part of it. We've worked up to G and we know that that's our new G now. So let's go up a whole step. There's A. Let's go up another whole step, A to B, right? Okay, let's find that on the third string. Nope. Yes. Oh, well look at that. The way the guitar is tuned, it works out again. So A, one, two, three, four, and over. So we've got this four fret, you know, downwards and over again. And that makes our whole step from the fourth string to the third string. So G, A, B, and then B goes up to C, that's the half step. Now, let's say I'm really just kind of, you know, wanting to get to the second string, because the whole step would be the D there, but let's find out the third string to second string. So let's think, okay, maybe four frets will work again. Nah, it doesn't. <laughs> so that doesn't work. Let's go up one more. Ah, it does work. So. The whole step from C to D going from the third string to the second string is down three frets. One, two, three, and over, and you got it. The only reason I'm playing that is just to show that you have down three frets. Those have nothing to do with the notes in the scale or anything like that. So now you've got G, A, B, C, down three, three frets and over a string, D. Right, and then we'll go up our whole step because that's G, or it's, that's what's next in, in the major, excuse me, butchered that. <laughs> that's what's next in the major pattern, E. And now we would go up a whole step again to get to F sharp, but nah, let's go to the next string. So E, let's see if the thir three frets work. Nope, that's back to G. So we gotta go down a half step. Four frets again, one, two, three, four, and over a string. So, E, F sharp, and then a half step up to G. What we just learned was to have a whole step work across strings from the sixth to the fifth string, we've got, um, down four frets and over a string, okay? From the fifth to the fourth string, we have down four frets and over a string. 
from the fourth to the third, down four frets and over a string. Okay, so from the third to the second, it's down three frets and over a string. And then from the second to the first, it's down four frets and over a string. So you just have to remember down four frets over a string for all the string sets except for the third to the second, because that's where the tuning gets weird on the guitar. <laughs> so that is how you can find anything. All of those all of those things we just did on one string, now you can find that all across the guitar. And yes, there's a bunch of other ways you can do it too, and there's, there's some really cool things. But that's what I would say um, to really focus on because it's what I'm seeing in my students is a lack of understanding like, if we're in the key of D, what are the notes in D? How do I find that out? And this I think is a really kind of fundamental way of figuring that out. So that there's what we're doing with that. Now, let's try it a different way. Let's do um, a, a slightly different kind of way of going across the fretboard. So if we're looking at this last example on the PDF, and this will be the last thing we talk about, we're playing now three notes per string. And there's a whole world of this I don't know and I don't, I don't really care about knowing that you know players use three notes per string. So I don't really typically do that, but I think of it in the sense of like I know my notes so I can I can do that, right? So G, we're, in the, we're doing G again as an example. G, whole step up to A. A, whole step up to B. So now I've got a half step to C, but let's say I wanna switch strings. So now we're thinking of half steps rather than whole steps. So I know that my C is right here on the fifth string. So look at that, one, two, three, four, five. It's down five frets. So to get a half step across from the sixth string to the fifth string, I have to go down five frets. So, okay, and then we'll go up a whole step to D a whole step to E, and then a whole step to F sharp, and remember, that's just down four frets, not even thinking now about it, and then we're back to G with the half step. Okay, and then let's do it again. G up to A is a whole step, A up to B is a whole step, B up to C, right? That is a half step, and that's just one, two, three, four, five, and over, G, A, B, C. So the pattern is the same. Fourth to the third string, because of the way it's tuned, down five frets, over a string. Whole step up to D, whole step up to E. Whole step up to F sharp, remember, from the third to the second string, that's three frets down, one, two, three, and over. And then half step up to G, all right? And that is the whole kind of the you know, pattern of it, right? So. So that is what the basis for all of this is, is just playing and understanding the intervals between the notes. And, and that's, that's something we're gonna really get into in, in future lessons here within this little six part series, what intervals really are. But it's for, a, you know, a really plain way of saying it. it's just this it's the space between the notes so experiment with just getting one string down really really good and then figuring it out across the different strings and just start off with like some keys you usually play in that's the, always the best start it's the most practical start and, and that's the whole point of this is using practical theory to understand the fretboard better so quick recap learn all of your notes on your sixth string or really any of the strings. That's the best, just like going up the guitar and then going back down. And then start branching out with that pattern I showed you of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and then going across the guitar. So coming across the strings and experiment and getting those feels of, okay, a whole step this way across the string is like that. A half step this way across the string is like that. And you'll find very quickly, like I never play like that ever. <laughs> That's very uncomfortable to me. But it's still good to know it nonetheless. Um, and just knowing that's how the guitar is tuned. So that is lesson one, know your notes. Join me Thursday and we'll have a lesson two to this and there'll be four more after. So if you're just seeing this archived, go download the PDF from the course page 
The link is in the description. If there's no questions, I'll leave you with that. Thank you.